see so many fit opera buffs able to down the tour this morning and get along for a slice of cake. And why not make an effort, ladies and gentlemen? Why not make an effort? Because the Opera House Organising Committee, that is the 40th birthday celebration organising committee, have gone mad in their own quiet way to celebrate this day of days, the People's Day, here at the Opera House in the last 40 years. I need to reference at the top of the deep, the Australian Girls Choir, to my left. Excellently, it's hard to keep still when the baby band's playing. Now the choir, established in 1984 by Judith Kirkley, OAN, and uh, it's developed a reputation for inspirational performances and audiences around the world. And then, of course, they'll be in action later. Of course, you're already in action so far. We've seen the detachment of the Royal Australian Navy Band under the musical direction of Lieutenant Stephen Stinky. Steve, Steve. <laughs> And get this, the Navy Band played at the opening 40 years ago today. 40 years ago today. And most of them played then, and they're back to do it again today. <laughs> I should point out that the Navy Band thrilled the world at the recent Navy Fleet Review here on Sydney Harbour. Uh, it was tremendous to see them in action and you can compare Australian Navy bands with the bands from other navies in the rest of the world and I think we won by the length of the straight. Our Navy Band, the best in the world ladies and gentlemen. Proven fact. Now, it's a morning of icons here, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, it's an iconic building behind us, and we have representatives from the New South Wales Surf Lifesavers coming along. The Spitzer Fire Tugs are in action. Uh, Spitzer, of course, a Danish-owned towage firm. The Historical Harbour Ferries, they'll be in action as well. We've got performers representing the traditional owners and a mystery guest. That mystery guest is a person who would love to sing in a big opera here. So if anybody is casting a big opera, this person might exactly fill that difficult opening spot. And then, of course, we have many dignitaries here. But before we get to them, just a couple of facts. The Opera House took 14 years to construct before it was opened on this day in 1973. The American singer and political activist Paul Robeson was the first person to perform at the Opera House. In 1960, he climbed up on the scaffolding and sang a version of Old Man River as the workers ate their lunch. There are over one million tiles on the shelves of the Opera House. From a distance, they all look white, but if you get up, and, uh, up closer, you'll see that there are a number of colours. There's the cream and white and two types of finish, there's a matte and a glaze, and it gives us this characteristic uh, sheen that the Opera House sales have. And now, as they um, wandered on, I can welcome dignitaries. Her Excellency, Professor Marie Bashir, she's had a promotion, she's now the Administrator of the Commonwealth of Australia. Well, <laughs> so, Nicholas Chabot, we're lucky enough to have the Honourable George Suris, New South Wales Minister of the Art, John Simon, who's recently taken over the chair of the Sydney Opera House Trust, and of course the CEO of the Sydney Opera House, uh, Louise Herrick. It's tremendous to have all those dignitaries, and thanks for giving up your time on this very exciting morning, the 40th anniversary of the Opera House. And now, on this morning of icons, let's welcome an icon who really needs absolutely no introduction, a great ambassador for disabled people everywhere, and an ambassador here at the Opera House for House Accessibility and a super athlete from previous years. Can you put your hands together and welcome Louise Savage. <laughs> yes, welcome Louise. And you look as though you've been in training. Have you been done any training today? Uh, not today, no, yesterday. Yes, what did you do yesterday? 33 kilometres. <laughs> 33 kilometres. Now, would that be a normal day for you? No, not normally. Um, I'm usually the one coaching the athletes now, but I'm actually doing a race this year for the first time in a while. So, yeah, I'm doing a bit of training myself. Now, coming to the Opera House, your role as Ambassador for Access. Yeah, now. Look, to a lay person, it looks a fairly difficult place to get around if you're in a wheelchair. How have you, what sort of improvements have you made and what would you like to see? Oh, there's been many, many improvements here. Um, it's just been fantastic for not only people in chairs, but different people with different disabilities in general. So the Western Employer is probably the biggest thing that's been done and the first public lift, uh, which is probably my favourite and it doesn't actually have a roof on it, so it's kind of cool. Um, you can get all the way out to the box office now and um, yeah, there's just so many more improvements to, for so many people to enjoy now the Opera House. 
and shows you've seen here. Obviously, you've come to see shows. And what, what name a couple that have stood out? Uh, I've seen quite a few shows, um, a lot of concerts. Um, Christmas Drag, probably one of my favourite. Um, that's very exciting. <laughs> But yeah, I've been to a lot of shows and been very fortunate, um, probably one of the perks more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. And um, over the years, um, you know, when you first came, there's been obviously the lift and so on, it makes it much easier for you to get around the house. And so you come with much less uh, uncertainty about how you'll be able to move. Yeah, you can get around and get to a lot of places that everybody else came a long time ago. You'd have to go to stage door and be escorted everywhere. Now you can be part of the a community and everywhere else that, that everyone can go to and enjoy the bars and the facilities. So yeah, it's fantastic just to be able to enjoy that with the rest of your family and friends that you come here with. And I forgot to mention there will be cake, ladies and gentlemen, later. Obviously a birthday party, there will be cake. Uh, are you a cake eater? Yeah. Yes, favourite cakes? Ooh, red velvet's pretty good. Red velvet. <laughs> I understand the cake is something special. Can you please thank Louise Savard? <laughs> and uh, now, look, this is a real treat. We have three generations of Ertzens with us today. And I'd like you to welcome now to the central commentary position, Jan Ertzen, Lynn Ertzen, Naya Ertzen, who's Lynn's daughter, and Savannah Popov Wilson, who's Lynn and Lynn's granddaughter. Can you please welcome three generations of Ertzen? Now, Lynn, thanks very much for coming. And uh, I was just wondering if you can remember the day when your dad won the competition. Yes, I can. And cheers all around in the house? Cheers all around in the house, yes. And had you been to Sydney before? No, never. No. And did you have an idea of where it was? No. No. And <laughs> I was 10. Oh, I understand, but 10 people know the world when you're 10 um, sometimes. No, no, no. <laughs> And did your dad bring the work home? Yes. And so on the kitchen table, there were all these diagrams. No. No? Not on the kitchen table. <laughs> no, he had his office uh, in the house, in another part of the house. Right. And um, was it a difficult process, the design itself? Did he come home and tear his hair out thinking, I can't get this to work? I think you're talking about it on a level which Kind of, is of the course artistic. it was difficult. Yes, yes. You know, but I didn't, I didn't know it. I was 10 years old. My life was concerned with all kinds of other things. And he was my father, so I didn't particularly think of him as somebody who was as brilliant as he was, or difficulties at his work. I don't know where you were when you were 10. Wow. Yeah. You were not too involved in your I wasn't, life. I, no, and I wasn't connected to an architect. Now, the other thing is, when you show people an image of the Opera House now, yes. no matter where they are, they recognise it as the Sydney Opera House, don't they? Yes, they do. Okay. Other buildings that have that effect? Well, I guess the pyramids would have that effect, the Eiffel Tower would have that effect. Most people, would, the Eiffel Tower particularly, people recognise it as France, don't they? They do, they do. And the Opera House is the same thing. The whole world knows Australia when they see that. They do. Now maybe you should pass the microphone over to your brother. With yes. Pleasure. And thanks very much for coming today. This is excellent. Lynn Oates is going to come up. And now, Leo, have you been to shows here? I haven't been many times because and I've been here uh, twice a year over the past 40 years. And can you remember some of the shows that stick in the mind? Or oh, some of the operas, the yes. magnificent way that they set up and the appalling conditions under which that is going on, which of course is why I'm here, you know, to help alleviate some of the little problems or major problems that are also in the opera house. And of course Australia's connection with Denmark is through your father in the main, apart from recent television shows. It is. And is it the same the other way around? Denmark's connection to Australia? Yeah, I think that has really been cemented by uh, our conference marrying an Australian woman, uh, Mary, true. Princess Mary, which is, is, who seems very popular in Denmark. And um, I was asking your sister about the iconic nature of the building. It is completely unique, isn't it, in it terms of the sales and so on? Oh, absolutely. It, it is a unique Australian expression of uh, will and, and enthusiasm and uh, go 
let's go and do it kind of spirit, which was so uh, prominent in Australia back in the 60s. Uh, and probably see this. Had your father come to Sydney before designing it? No, I'd never been to Australia before. No, but he got good information about what the area was like, what the nature was like, and they always gathered a lot of this information before making any commitments to drawings or anything. And uh, I was asking your sister about the the work in designing it. That was all done more or less in Denmark, then he entered the competition. And then was there a process of going backwards and forwards for everybody in the family? No. Uh, my father, obviously, he came here to pick up the prize. Yes. And then he got the commission to, uh, as an architect to continue the work and uh, make this building like it is today. Uh, my mother went with him on some of these occasions, but my brother had just been born and of course needed my, one of my parents at home. But he came very often and he travelled through China, through Japan, Nepal, India and so on, gathering, absorbing inspiration on the way for this magnificent job. And uh, you were in the architectural game yourself, and do you follow in your father's footsteps into trying to produce buildings as iconic as this, or of course? I would of course love to if any clients are around tonight. <laughs> <laughs> assuming this, a building like this happens once in a lifetime for an individual, and it, it, goes, it takes the case between and a job like this comes up. And a wonderful location. There was talk about a different location for the Opera House prior to the competition being held, but luckily this was chosen, which has also helped making the Sydney Opera House an icon that comes today. And when you wander around and say your father in parts of the world you know, designed this building, um, how are you received? Does that, um, does that help you with your work? It is amazing when I come around the world and I mention my name in, in, in professional circles. They all have some sort of relation to this and um, I always feel very welcome. And it's a fantastic visit, uh, business card to have for me. And I get to meet all these wonderful people, of course. Well, can you thank Jan Olsen there? Thanks very much for that, Jan. And very lucky to have three generations, Jan, Lynn, Naya, and Savannah Popoff Wilson. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, <clears throat> we should be coming up to one of those special moments in the uh, ceremony this morning where the flotilla, which is bringing the cake that we're all going to participate, uh, arrives at the Mount of War Steps. And I'm just wondering if I need to take a cue from my stage manager help. We're okay with this. And so if you look over here to the Mount of War oh, Steps and more details of the Opera House if you like, but how close is the is the flotilla? We said we would race ahead and got to the flotilla before we thought we might have to.